Good evening everyone and a very warm welcome to our first ever preview program here on Burley TV for the 2022 Land Rover Burley Horse Trials. The anticipation has never been more eager. The first time this great event, this essence of the sport of eventing has taken place since 2019. To enjoy it all with me on the eve of Burley, our commentary team Nicole Brown and John Kyle and of course the multiply decorated European Olympic and world rider Tina Cook. Uh, Tina, first of all, how much are we anticipating this year's event? A, a five-star event, the, the very essence of the sport. Oh, we've really missed it. As riders, this is what so many of the riders dream to be able to compete at a venue like this. The level of competition, and you need the best horses in the world to come here and really take up the challenge. And Nicole, this year, a slightly different feel to the event because the, the World Championships in, in Protoni in Italy are only, are only two weeks away. How will that slightly change the dynamic of it? It always is that way when we have a World Championship year. You know, we had an Olympics last year as well, which is much, much closer to a Worlds than we would normally see. I think we've got a brilliant field. We've got eight riders who've won at five-star level previously, two winning combinations at five-star previously, some brilliant first-timers. The young guns are going to be out in force. It is going to be a brilliant weekend, and we could well see a new name on that trophy. Who knows? John, what makes Burley different? How would you characterise this event as distinct, say, from badminton or Kentucky? The five stars are kind of like a family wedding. There's there's bits that are the same at every wedding you go to, and then there's bits that are different. And you know, Burley's thing is we're here at this magnificent venue, and we've probably got the toughest, most detailed cross-country test in the sport, and that's what sets Burley really apart and a new cross-country designer this year, more of which later in the show. But let's take a canter through some of the leading contenders for this year's event. We'll start perhaps with the defending champion, Tina, Pippa Funnel, though I doubt she can remember it was so long ago that she actually won the event. It was three years back in 2019. She's got two big chances this year. Do you think she could do it? Oh, never disregard Pippa Funnel. She is a legend of the sport. She always runs herself down and pretends that, you know, maybe it's not going to be her year. She proved it in 2019 what a champion can do. She's got two different horses here. They're more than capable of putting in a good result. Which of the two do you think has the stronger credentials? I think Billy Walk-On. He's been a little bit disappointing at Badminton the last few years. But I think that the ground here will really suit him. He wouldn't like it too muddy. I think Pippa would just set off and not expecting to make the time, but I bet she might go and surprise herself. Her other ride is Myers Hope. Nicole, I watched a lovely piece on social media that Pippa herself had put on the other day where she said, this horse really looked after her. She said, you looked after the old girl. Self-deprecating as always, Pippa, but a horse that she's clearly got a very special place in the heart for. Yeah, absolutely. And Myers Hope, you know, top 20 of the European Championships back in, in 2019, I think it was as well is absolutely a great chance i agree with tina billy walk on second at bicton last year in the five star there but you can't discount pippa funnel she could well make it back to back wins if you believe there's no substitute for experience that doesn't just apply to the riders here at burley it also applies to the horses veneer kamira the the mount of, of piggy march she's a 17 year old mare john but but there's people who believe she's still improving is that possible I, i'm one of them um <laughs> Twice second here, top five here, winner at badminton. Um, it might be one of the last times we see Vanir Kimura, but she couldn't come here better prepared. And just show of hands, who'd love to see Piggy and Vanir Kimura win? Yeah. <laughs> yes. well, well, let's ask why, Tina. Why would that be such a popular result? I think because the general public, and Piggy is so honest um, about the mayor's ability, but she's gone on and repeated about the partnership that they have now got. They have a training system that really works. She's not the best mover in the dressage phase. She's not the, she hasn't got the biggest jump in the world, but she's got the heart. Mm. And she has proved year in, year out, that consistency wins medals. It wins competitions. And Piggy is one of the best we've got. So put, put those two together. And it shows in this sport that a partnership can take you all the way through. Been second, second, and fifth at, at Burleys in the past. Oliver Townend has won two Burleys all the way back in 2003, I think his first one was. 2009. It? 2009, his first one. I beg your pardon, it was Pip Funnel 2003, wasn't yep. it? And then again, Nicole, in 2017. 2017 yeah. And so this year, a different horse because Ballamore Class goes to the, the World Championships in Protoni. Tell me about his two his two mounts this He's year. He's got two and another great. He could make it three wins on three greys because Swallow Springs, uh, in my mind, would be the favourite of his two rides, a horse that was actually top 
top 10 here with Andrew Nicholson back in 2019. So has burly form, but has form at five star with Oliver as well. We're on the podium in third at badminton this spring. They won last time out at the Hambro Sport Horses Burgeon International Horse Trials as their final preparation run for here. Their dressage is getting better and better. We're expecting a good number from them in the first phase. John, what do you think? I agree with Nicole, and I think, you know, what's interesting about some of the new combinations with riders like that, and we're probably going to talk about Tim Price and Polystar as well, is the the improvement is going to be phenomenal because they're gelling every month, every week that those horse and rider combinations are together, especially with a rider like Oliver, they're getting better. If he can improve on what we saw in the spring with Swallow Springs, and there's no reason to doubt it, he's got to be a massive contender here. And how much is it for him, Tina, his own, his own self-belief that he can get a horse that other people might not think can get amongst the placings onto the podium? I think Oliver has an abundance of self-belief um, and he actually portrays that through to the horses. He's got some reasonably average horses round, some very big courses, because he puts the pressure on, gives them the kick at the right time. He's ultra ultra competitive so he's always going for the time so he can portray that belief into an average horse to produce the goods you've ridden around burley countless times do you think this track tests courage more than any other i think it's uh, believe in the partnership i have always been a believer in partnership but this with the terrain here at burley and the hills and the stamina the horses have got to have that competitive instinct to keep on galloping when the riders give them a squeeze that, that they can accelerate again and not just blow up in a lump and go oh gosh i'm tired i don't want to carry on it's a very special horse that comes here to burley and a special rider and there and this course can produce some special riders as well so as we said earlier there's some young riders coming through that i believe have got a lot of talent that this will really bring them on into the future talk about special riders William Fox Pitt has been riding longer than most of us can remember he's here again Nicole on a horse called Oratorio yeah. uh, he, he seems to produce them from nowhere just when you think he's run out of ammunition he's just a magician isn't he you know he's so brilliant he's won six burleys more than any other rider but he's won 14 five stars that's more than any other rider as well he is just absolutely brilliant oratorio has had five starts at five star level now is pretty experienced was top 15 at badminton this spring you would think that actually he's coming here and i i would imagine he's quietly confident now, you, you are very heavily involved in the equi rating, which tries to predict the outcome algorithmically of events like this. William Fox Pitt confounds you every time, doesn't he? Just tell us why. <laughs> He's one of those riders. You know, there's a few of them. Tina, yourself, were, were a, was a master of it. Um, Pippa Funnel is another that, that just know when to press the button. And they're so good at being able to do that on the big, big occasions. They don't need to have the fast prep runs around the four-star shorts, you know. And they're so good at delivering on that big occasion. William would be one of those. Um, you would rarely see him go round a four-star short or an open intermediate inside the time. He's normally getting more time penalties than he got in the dressage, which I think is quite a skill in itself, to be honest. <laughs> but it, it's very easy. Is that not just <laughs> the secret to a, to a good, strong, extended career? I think over the years when we've produced so many of our horses, a lot of the older riders say like William Fox, Pitt and myself, we've had horses from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. and, and in my mind that horses don't want to have the gun to the head, the, the foot on the pedal the whole time. Because, you know, you want to avoid injuries as well. So you want to get the experience into the horses, but not have that pressure of any injuries because injuries can set you back massively and enjoy the horses at the top end of the sport. So a lot of us have, have been installed when it was a longer format within the sport, you couldn't keep running them quick, quick, quick. So I think that's still part of our production of these horses. Mm. And yeah, we like to surprise you guys and come out with a, a big one and <laughs> here when you get to Burley. I, I think it's it's amazing because in so many horse sports, we're, we're finding that the careers of these horses shortening and shortening and shortening. In this event this year, we've, we've already talked about Vanir Kamira. What about Classic Moe, uh, John, the, 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 the mount of Janelle Price? There is no more exciting horse to no. watch around cross country. And how old now? 19. 19 years old. Uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's unthinkable. 20, 25 years ago for, you know, riders of Toddy's age to still be doing it, horses of this age, and yet they just keep coming through. People are looking after themselves. People are looking after their horses. Again, you go back to the amount of runs. Molly, classic Moe, she doesn't get that many runs. They just do a couple of nationals, go five star. Last year, two trips to America. They really hope to maybe give the mayor her valedictory there. This maybe 
potentially is the right place to come because the dressage at 19 years old, I mean, goodness, at my age, I'm pretty <laughs> stiff, but, uh, you know, Lucky maybe you. maybe not going to lead the dressage, but everything else will be right up her street. And this could be a wonderful, wonderful valet to that horse. And uh, Tina, as someone who, who whose career was characterised or is still characterised <laughs> by, by precision and rapidity across country, how much do you admire what Janelle does on, on this horse? Hey, look, to, to have the older horses competing, it shows in the care that the horses have had. As John just said, you know, you can't just pull them out of the field and, and be competing at this level. Once they've got to the top, they don't have to have the repetitive competitions. They know their job. You've just got to keep them physically mm. as good a shape as possible and mentally. They both go together. And then here you are. Well, you're also you're in there. You're in with everybody else to, to be, the, be the winners there. Talk about Janelle Price. Tim Price, uh, she and Tim have been mainstays of New, New Zealand for so long. He comes here with a with a strong hand. How do you rate him this time? I think he's a very strong hand. I mean, again, one of the best riders in the world. I know we keep saying that, but he does. Again, he's he's not always on the most classically uh, talented of horses, but he has such a rapport. He's such a horseman, and. I think he's, he's got a very strong hand um, with, with all of his three horses. I would never disregard him. Um, which one do you predict will come out on top? It's interesting. You know, Bango was fifth here in 2019. Vitali was his Tokyo Olympic ride last year. But for me, the really interesting one is Polystar because it's a new ride for Tim. Uh, this season was formally campaigned by Australians Chris Burton, who won here back in 2016 with Nobilis 18. Um, Chris won Samuel Four Star with the horse back in 2019. The horse has then had quite an extended break, I think has been doing some pure show jumping. There's very little to go on and they feel like they're actually coming here. Tim, Tim knows what he's doing. You know, the horse is experienced. He is exceptional as a horseman. I just think we might not know what's coming, but actually they could put in a very, very strong performance this weekend. John, we ought to give a more than a nod to Ros Cantor, oh, oughtn't we? Oh my word, yeah. Um, you know, Ros is, it's so different. We were talking, I uh, was listening to Nicole's podcast. I mean, it's a long time actually since Ros was here because she's been on so busy on championship duty. It's a very different Ros Cantor that we meet now than we did, what, 2017? 2016. 16 2016. was the last time she was here. Um, the horse she has here, you know, such an impressive second place in the four-star short at, uh, at Bramham. Um, and you'll remind me of all the other results. But Ros is so difficult to look beyond because, again, when it just comes to a, turning in the first stage performance in the dressage, she's going to be amongst them. And mm -hmm. then she will not, she tenaciously will not let go of whatever advantage she has. Because, again, one of the best riders in the sport. And this is a rider's course. Nicole, who's on the blind side here? Who might be the winner that no one's mentioned? I think Sarah Bullimore, Karoe. Um Individual third, so an individual bronze medal at the European Championships in Avanche last year unbelievably talented. Sarah feels like she's been knocking on the door of a really big result for some years. She's been second at five star level on numerous occasions, never quite taken the top spot. Karue, if he is on his A game and he is a very small, I wouldn't call him a pony, but he's diminutive in, in stature. He's huge in character. Um, he has so much belief in himself. If Sarah can channel that in the right direction, they should absolutely be in the mix here and look out for them in the first phase because they've been as low as sub 20 right. uh, in the first phase. So just keep a close eye. And Tina, of the, the younger riders, the riders say sub, sub 30, um, who do you think's got the temperament, the mindset to really excel at this level? I think we've got some really super young riders coming through. They're all in their 20s. Um, we've got Bobby Upton. Has been a bit unlucky at five star so far, but she's got some fantastic form all year. In fact, most of her life uh, through juniors and young riders. She could really, really come, come good here with a horse that she knows so well in Cola. Uh, Felicity Collins, Alice Casburn. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. And it's really exciting to see because we've been a little bit quiet, been relying on the old timers uh, to come up and, and, and get everyone excited in the sport. I'm getting more excited because I can see some younger ones coming through that could do it. A perfect blend of youth and experience at uh, this year's Land Rover Burley Horse Trials. We're going to take a break now. When we come back, we'll be having a look at the course, which is the same but different and with a new name as the chief designer.
It is not a machine, though the precision of its mechanics can draw some admiration. Propelled by a unique movement, graced with a singular drive, it has a personality of its own. It was born from a special bond. Crafted over years with infinite patience and utmost care, listening to every tick, going over every move again and again to build a trust like no other, the kind of trust that allows you to push further, higher. Always the kind of trust that can transcend any challenge. Boodles, a family story. I think there's something really, really special about something that can be passed on, live and tell a tale to the next generation. So when you wear my mother's pieces, I get to tell you the story behind that, and you get a little piece of them and their history. Welcome back to this special preview on the eve of the 2022 much anticipated Land Rover Burley Horse Trials alongside Nicole Brown, John Kyle, Tina Cook as we head out and have a look at the course this year. Now clearly with Burley, Nicole, there have to be the great traditional features, but we've got a new course designer this year, Derek de Grazia from the United States. What's he done to ginger it up? It's subtle. It is subtle. You know, it is still the Burley that we know and love. We still see all of those traditional fences, Defender Valley, the Leaf Pit, you know, the Maltings, all of those really, really iconic Burley fences. But Derek has absolutely made his mark. He's a very, very clever course designer. He's very subtle. He makes you think, which is never a bad thing. I, when I first saw it, I was really scratching my head and I was really sort of looking at things and considering it as opposed to in previous past Burleys when I've sort of walked up to it and gone, whoa, that, that's just huge. It's very clever and I cannot wait to see how it jumps. What, Tina, do you think a, a course designer needs to do here? You've got this beautiful parkland, very undulating, some, some real galloping stretches. What do they need to do with the course to challenge the riders? Not to, to get carried away to try and trick horses, you know, and, and you don't want them to be going down that path. It's got to be showing what the riders can do. They've got to be quick thinking. If the horse isn't feeling quite like it normally does on that day or has done a tricky jump, that they can react and look at an option. I like options because I think it's interesting for the public and also to get the riders thinking about how their horse is gonna jump that best and the quickest. Because if you're being competitive, you don't wanna be wasting any time, but you've equally gotta have your foot to the pedal. Also getting the timing right, don't go off too fast. You know, you've still got a long way to go and to test your horse's stamina as well. So there's a huge amount of thought process that goes into before, the riders and horses leave the start box. Uh, Nicole, everybody loves to stand by the water and watch the, the horses negotiate those combinations. What's Derek done for us this time? Well, there's a, a couple of different opportunities for horses to get their feet wet. The trout hatchery, in my mind, comes up very, very thick and fast. It's similar in a way to we've seen it before. But the one thing I would say, as Tina says, you've got to think quickly. If you get a, a jump in over the second element and actually things aren't going to plan, you've got to be able to react like that. And it, it really, really does... Um, I guess, favour those riders that can think on their feet, that know their horses and can react. 
John, so many of these combinations cause issues year after year. I know you've been having a close look at the dairy farm. What can we expect this time? Yeah, the dairy mans are always tough because there's not, you know, there's enough terrain here at Burley without suddenly having to go up these incredibly steep mounds. And as ever, the designers, it's such a playpen for them. They can set up really technical efforts there, quite accurate lines. It's like we're going to say, I think, about so many of these places. It's where the riders really have to think about what is happening there and then and adjust their plan. This isn't a course you can ride to plan A. Um, and I think the Dairyman's going to be one of those areas where they really are going to have to see how they get into it and how they get out of it. Are the leaf pit likely to pose some problems? Oh, always does. It's coming early this year, and as the horses are galloping actually back towards the stables, and believe me, horses do know where mm. the stables are. Not ideal that, that early on, is it? <laughs> if they're that way inclined, and you come off that leap pit, it's about a six-foot drop. At least it looks terrifying when you're standing at the top, and the horses whiz down to a big oxer down the bottom, and then a committed striding up to a corner on some really uneven ground. So if the horses are not listening, and the momentum has just taken them too quickly, they could easily have a run out at that corner. John, we ought to talk about the terrain here. Yeah. We've had the, the, the most significant drought in the UK since records began and, and certainly since 1976, the, the driest midsummer period. We're standing on perfectly lush green here. Water is the obvious answer, but how on earth have they managed to, to make the course rideable? As a sport, we're incredibly lucky in the investment and the foresight of Burley, what, 20 years ago, I think, to just this course, all of our arenas are fenced off year round. They're manicured and looked after year round. So actually they were not necessarily prepared for the drought, but the ground went into the drought in the best possible condition then. They didn't have to work at it from zero. They were working at it from 80%. And of course, the, the heavy rains we've had the last couple of weeks have actually really just tipped it over into their favour. This is, this is better than they were expecting mm. it, and it is amazing. And I guess the fact it hasn't been ridden on since 2019 as well is going to help, Tina. Yeah, you get that really thick grass and it's like it's just like a carpet. It is like your lawn and it has greened up unbelievably quickly since the rain. They also had the lakes here. So if they needed to irrigate the, the ground, they could do. But the heavens open just at the right time. I just want to ask you a little bit about the, the shape of the competition. We've talked so much in recent years about the balance of power between the disciplines and whether one discipline has too much sway in determining the results. Do you think the sport has got the balance about right now? I think when you come to this level of competition, yes, you have, because the dressage marks are closer together so that if you haven't got the best moving horse, if you're prepared and the horse is able to go quick cross country, you can make up. I have been here before on horses that don't particularly like the dressage phase and they've absolutely flown around and I've got into the top 10 on, on quite a few occasions. So it is possible and, and where it in the favour of riders like myself, I love the challenge of a course like mm. this. Yes, this really gets me excited, even just talking about it, and I'm not riding it this year. Um, but to go out there and when you set off, just to see what your horse is made of and, and what the horse gives you. You know, it's so special from that point of view when it, and it gives you that above and beyond and try so hard. It's a very special moment. You're getting my heart pumping oh, now. Gosh. <laughs> it's, it's, well, once it's in you, it never leaves you, I guess. I guess that's, Completely. The, that's the thing. Um, from each of you, I'd like a leader after the dressage and a winner. Nicole. Had to come to me first. Um, <laughs> I am going to say leader after the dressage, Sarah Bullimore Karue. Mm -hmm. uh, the winner for me, Oliver Town and Swallow Springs. Okay. John? I think Pippa might pip the dressage with uh, Billy Walk on, and I think Vanir Kamira is our winner. Tina? I think Tim Price on Polystar could, you know, he can do a very, very good test. And I'm going back to Vanir Kamira and Piggy. Uh, and Piggy very much so. You know, I think she's had such a good prep. I'm putting the. I'm putting all my faith in her. I think it says something about how open it is, though, that we could all have said each of those yeah. names as yeah. well. It's <laughs> and there's names, Nicole, we, you know, we haven't even touched on Kitty King and Tom McEwen. They'd be single figure odds almost. Goodness me, absolutely. And Kitty King for Andre Biatz have been in great form over the last couple of years. And I think they can really feel that actually, you know, unlucky not to have been selected for the World Championships. But such is the strength and depth in the British team at the moment that they're not on that, that plane or that very long drive to Protoni. And so I feel Kitty, she's always hugely competitive. And actually, she's going to come here this year with extra fire in her belly. 
um, and she will really want to lay down the marker. Uh, no, I've, I, I've, been, I've been listening to you all the last few days on, on various podcasts. I, 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 I wasn't aware of just, isn't everyone in this sport at this level competitive or is, does she take it to a whole different level? I think everybody, when you get to a competition like this and you are a team, British team rider, you are all competitive. And actually now we've mentioned Kitty, I feel guilty that we haven't mentioned her because actually she is another person for every reason that Carla's just said, she deserves and this is her opportunity to really shine. So again, I am massively supporting her. There's, you know, there's 15 people here who, if they do their best, they could win this. But the other thing about our sport is everyone is competitive, like Tina says, but sometimes that's competing with your previous best. What's a good result for mm. you and your horse? So everyone is here running their own individual competition as well and incredibly competitive with the standard they've set for themselves. And Vanir Kamira, if she wins and if she fulfills your prediction, Tina, she'll become... Uh, this, uh, this amazed me. I know, it's mad. Only two mares in 59 runnings of Burley have won. Only two. Uh, and we've got some great chances this year, the likes of Vanir Kamira, Pencos Crown Jewel of Ros Canters, CHF Coolizer of Tom McEwens, who were, were second at Poe last year. You know, a mare absolutely could do it. I am totally rooting for the girls. Um, can you remember who the other two were? <laughs> Headley Britannia made married. Made married. Oh, there, there we, we are. Thanks Look at that. <laughs> that is why. That is why we've got a top team here for you all week. Nicole Brown, John Kyle, Tina Cook will be with you right the way until the final horse has jumped the final show jump on Sunday, and probably a fair while beyond that. I shouldn't wonder. <laughs> We, we don't want to be trying to rush out with the traffic, that's for sure. Uh, you will be with us all the way. We're so grateful to have you watching Burley TV for the next few days. The first time we embarked on this venture, it will be nothing if not comprehensive. As I said, every day you'll see every uh, dressage test, every cross-country round, every show jumping round of the final phase as well. Um, dressage, covering begins, dressage coverage begins at 9.35 tomorrow. Uh, Yogi Breisner is um, conducting a masterclass, which is... Um, racehorse to riding horse with Laura Collett and uh, top jockey Asheen Murphy and then every day we'll be closing off with our special Today at Burley programme at 7.30. That is it from all of us for the moment. Let the games begin. It is not a machine, though the precision of its mechanics can draw some admiration. Propelled by a unique movement, graced with a singular drive, it has a personality of its own. It was born from a special bond. Crafted over years with infinite patience and utmost care, listening to every tick, going over every move again and again to build a trust like no other, the kind of trust that allows you to push further, higher. Always the kind of trust that can transcend any challenge. I think there's something really, really special about something that can be passed on, live and tell a tale to the next generation. So when you wear my mother's pieces, I get to tell you the story behind that and you get a little piece of them and their history.